Moses parted the Red Sea. He said, Red Sea part, my people have to cross. And the Red Sea parted. We can affect things like that when we are tunnel vision, when we come into an absolute focus of being the light. Keep asking, even if you don't know who you're asking, the spirit, the soul, the consciousness of who you all are is listening. And as you keep asking, it's revealed to you. Our souls set up our journeys and our encounters. We are part of some divine intelligence. It's our responsibility to look into that every day. Spirit calls us in these most incredible moments and the more attuned you are, the more you hear the whisper. Spirit is very subtle, very subtle. We can constantly elevate and send light to every single thing that comes in our awareness. Our responsibility is to keep awakening, to keep moving into the light, and to keep space so that we can keep affecting everything we do in our lives. The only way is to... I started as an actress in London and went to Los Angeles to star in a movie. The movie didn't work out, and then I embarked in doing uh, actually three hours of yoga every day and learning meditation. And you know, when um, you do yoga, your kundalini opens up, right? And uh, the energy, the chi opens up. So I had a, a spiritual experience and I was reading an incredible book called The Autobiography of a Yogi. Uh, do you know that book? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite books of all time. Okay, great. Because uh, that book... Um, really opened me up. There is something about Paramahansa Yogananda that really connects to our spirit and our humanity and his kindness and tenderness. And uh, I embarked on this journey and I, it, it's like I always say, I think when we encounter spirit or we have a spiritual experience, I think I'm read what it is, it's really grace. Because up until that moment, I didn't really no, uh, I, I thought that was this, this girl from Greece who wanted to be a, a star and an actress. And I wasn't getting exactly, I mean, the movie fell through. So it was all like a setup because I think our souls set up our journeys and our encounters. And, and why it's important to ask for what you want, like people who don't have the connection or who want a deeper connection, I always encourage people to say, keep asking. And even if you don't know who you're asking, the one that knows you, the spirit, the soul, the consciousness of who you all are, at least listening. So, you know, you what I mean, you're never alone. It's like when you realize that as you are asking and you're saying, I need your help. I don't understand what I'm here to do, or I need to find these answers to um, my journey or my relationships. And as you keep asking, it's revealed to you. And it's um, it, it's extraordinary when you look back at your life, and I'm sure you have uh, the same experience. And if you look, it's like it all kind of makes sense. And you feel like there was a guiding force guiding you to do your life. For me, I had obviously that experience, uh, which was like my, I call it my big awakening. And then uh, I went on to uh, study and study my, with my teacher in jo John Roger in Los Angeles. And I started to little by little find what I was here to do in the world. And uh, I had, um, I had an experience of where I was auditioning for many uh, plays and many, I was living in New York uh, then, and I was auditioning for movies and plays and I wasn't getting any parts. And I went to audition for uh, a six hour adaptation of all the Greek plays together. And it was in Williamstown. It was called The Greeks. It's a very well known um anthology of Greek plays that was um, being launched at Williamstown in the Berkshires. And when I went to audition, the director, who was also Greek, loved my audition. I auditioned with Joan of Arc and by Bernard Shaw. But he said to me, 
I love you're so talented, which is I used to hear that all the time from people, but I can't hire you because if you have too much of a personality and you'll stick out in the chorus and in the leading part, I need big names like Sigourney Weaver and Susan Sarandon. And, he, and I said, I have a big name. It's Agapi Stasinopoulos. <laughs> and I said, it will be in the marquee, you know, it will fit in the marquee. And he said, I, it just breaks my heart, but I can't hire you. So I went to, uh, to I was going to my singing lesson. And on the way there, I, I was sitting next to uh, a young woman who um, looked so lovely. And, you know, I started to talk to her and uh, she said to me, I said, how are you? And she said, I'm, I'm good. How are you? And I said, I'm depressed because I felt so um, despondent that I wasn't even getting parts in a Greek plays. And um, she said to me, why are you depressed? And I said, I'm not getting any parts. I said, are you an actress? I said, yes. She said, I used to be an actress, but now I am a nurse because I'm a single mother. She said to me, oh, what did you audition with? And I said, Joan of Arc. And she said, which part? I said, well, the one with Bernard Shaw. And she said, oh, I love that monologue. And the monologue is very gutsy, Joan of Arc before her accusers. And she says, um, "I, you promised me my life, but you lied. You think that life is not nothing but being stone dead. I can live on water and bread alone, but to shut me from the light of the eye, the light of the day, so I no longer can can see my soldiers marching in the banners and hear the larks in the trees, it's worse than the furnace in the Bible that was heated seven times. So burn me, burn me at the stake, and when I burn, I will go through their hearts forever and ever, because I'm never alone, God is with me, and France is with me, and I will die, but they will, always remember me. So it's a very gutsy monologue and I started to perform it for her and then the whole bus kind of woke up and applauded me and she just held my hand and she said, my dear girl, you're so talented, go do your own thing. So that moment, and I know it was a bit of a long story to tell you, but basically Amrit, that moment, really woke me up to the reality that this was a messenger from spirit waking me up and saying, stop chasing the parts, go create your own thing. And I did indeed go and create a one woman show called Conversations with the Goddesses. That was the the seven stories of the goddesses, the, you know, Aphrodite and Hera and Artemis and, and Persephone and Demeter and Hestia. And I told their stories and then I added all the monologues from the plays and that play, Conversations with the Goddesses, became very successful in Los Angeles and all over and led me to write a book about the goddesses and a second book and do a PBS special. And I started to perform it, but it was really my creative spark. You see, right, there was nothing. There was, it was like from, uh, um, you know, the the famine to the banquet table. But, you know, and I I, I don't know if you relate to that. Um, Yeah, the uh, the Inspired Evolution before it was, I didn't realise how important creativity was actually for your spirit. My mother used to say, you can be creative washing the dishes. So I think we have to watch, Amrit, is that when things don't happen in the world like we want them to happen. When the world doesn't meet us in our desires, in our wants, we tend to cave in. We tend to collapse in ourselves. And that's kind of tragic, you know, because it's more like uh, imagine, um, imagine, uh, you know, the trees that are blossoming, you know, and they give us fruit. Imagine if because the tree wasn't met by the, the, by, by the environment the way it's supposed to be, imagine that the, the tree would then start saying, I'm not going to bear any fruit because I'm not being met by the environment. And how, you know, and the tree collapses. 
because in a way we are we are like these trees we are always we have so much to give and it's a challenge when the world doesn't meet you how do you go back to yourself and say the world doesn't meet me but i still have this god inside of me and i still have this spirit inside of me and can i connect with that spirit and birth it and you don't know the answer till you sit there and you are in communion with that spirit because all of us go through challenges of where you know the keeping the momentum in creating in the world what we want to create sometimes it we have like the tsunami of creation mm. and there is a lot going on and it pours through us and sometimes it's more like of a still lake and and it's not like uh things are aren't as creative or as potent and as productive uh and how do we deal with that you know how do you deal with that well actually before we get to there I wanted to ask the question because I'm sure there's two people that are listening to this two types of people that are listening to this podcast right now some of those which are super like ready to ask spirit for direction and guidance and they're like agapi can help me do this I need to ask her this question how can how but there are some people that are tuning in and going like they feel alone but they're not really sure that's the solution for them can you in, like invite us into how to ask spirit for direction and why we would want to do that Well when we say first of all let us define spirit it's like some people call it my wise self and some people might call it my high self yeah. or my soul mm. or my creative self so it's not like god the big blob in the sky <laughs> that is uh, you know you're asking the something that is so amorphous you just trust uh, your intuition that you have um you have an ability in you to really um create uh, a life that really you want but it's not so much you want a life that is you feel your your wholesomeness and your fulfillment i think ultimately everybody wants to feel a sense of aliveness and a sense of fulfillment and so if people are feeling oh, well i don't want to ask anyone and i don't even want to ask my inner guidance then you might find yourself um hitting your head against the wall with your ego or your personality or your limiting beliefs but i say let us open up the horizon let us open up the vista and and say you know right now i could use some inspiration i could use some guidance and then reaching out and asking people you trust asking your spirit but not trying to do it alone and i think that trying to do it alone a lot has to do with control we don't want to appear weak we don't want to feel disempowered vulnerable. we don't want to feel like vulnerable is that what you said did you say vulnerable yeah. because when you're asking for help so uh, you know in in us in in all of us we have a god within and not because i say so it's because who is breathing us who is making the blood pump who is making this heart beat who is making 36 trillion cells i'm read 36 trillion cells i don't even know what a cell looks like <laughs> let alone trillion cells so if you think you are amrit sandu and i'm just agapi stasinopoulos and i'm just thrown out into this earth saying what well, god do your own no we are part of a, of a, some divine intelligence and i think it's our responsibility to to look into that mm. every day every day we live a life that is so devoid of awareness of spirit of the light because ultimately this little time we have on earth is is so short and so uh, is right it's a very it's like a blink in the in in god's uh, uh universe mm. it's like a blink mm. uh it's such a short time so how we spend those days and how we devote ourselves and, and it's not just about oh, okay i'm i'm going to make a good living and feel safe and get married and have a few kids and uh 
and live happily ever after and one day die. You know, it's like, how do we give ourselves meaning? And I think it's up to each one of us to really find that. It's up to each individual to say, I've got to follow that inner thread, that golden thread inside of me. For me, uh, as I said, it was this moment of epiphany, but there were many other moments in my life. I studied in, in the spirit. I meditated. I started, I did courses. I um, healed the, the vulnerable part in me, the little girl in me that had a lot of pain about her parents. And it's, it's a multi we are a multidimensional human being. We have many aspects. We have uh, the history of who we are, the um, Amrit Sandhu and Agape Stasinopoulos that were born in certain country and have certain parents and siblings and relationships, and they form um, beliefs around themselves. And, uh, and then we have the divine, the soul that's guiding us. And for, uh, for me, it's like I say, let's connect with, where is your soul? What What is the path for you individually? And how can you find that? Hey there, guys. Agapi is so prayerful, and we're about to actually dive into some of the prayers, and she's going to introduce us to some. There's going to be a guided meditation coming up. Just before we dive even deeper into this podcast, I wanted to take a quick moment to ask you to humbly please subscribe to the channel. Everything you see around here is powered and empowered by your subscription to this channel. It helps with absolutely everything we're doing in the world. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. As I'm saying it, it's lighting up below. The button subscribe is going rainbow, but not unlike the colors of the background here. So please go ahead and click that, click the bell notification icon. We do conversations with all sorts of mind value authors and spiritual teachers, luminaries twice a week, and you'll be first to be up to date uh, with every episode that comes out if you do subscribe. Now, also to all of you that have subscribed, I want to take a quick moment out just to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for your subscription to the channel. Everything that is powered here at the Inspired Evolution, like I said, is thanks to your subscription. And I just cannot thank you enough for your incredible, incredible love and support. And with that, back to Agape. If people say, well, I, I don't really believe in God, it's not so much people don't believe in God, it's more that people don't trust God. Because I'm read, if I ask anybody, do you remember a time that there was something in your life larger than yourself, that you felt that presence? Everybody tells me something. Everybody says, oh, I remember when I was 14 and I was sitting by the bay and my dad was fishing and I just felt this oneness. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it is incredible to me of how everybody has a memory of, of, ah, yes, that was my spirit. But then we kind of disregard it. And what do we expect that, you know, the, there'll be lightning and thunder and the earth will shake and say, I am God and I live in you. <laughs> spirit is very subtle, very subtle. It's when we dare to go beyond the form. Have you ever um, served tea or cooked for someone? Or, I mean, I don't know if you are a father, but if you have a yeah, child. Two. And you have children? You have two? Yeah. How old are they? Three years and eight months. Oh, my God. Eight months. Do they, does he, is it a she or a he? They're both he's. And uh, the little one is not sleeping so much at the moment. <laughs> he must be so tired. I have a great nephew, my sister's grandson, and it's this, the sleep has been the greatest issue sometimes. He sleeps and his mother says, oh, my God, he slept throughout the night. Yeah, it's a, we, such a we gift. We all pray, you know, Alexander, please sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, if you are around these children, you are so humbled, so humbled, and so how can... I mean, it's God all over. Yeah, it's incredible it's, watching where did they come from, where are they developing they things. From? And having had two, like it's really trippy because we talk about nature versus nurture and, you know, it's just so interesting to see that they're because they're not very far apart and it's all very close in my mind. I watched one child and now I'm watching the other child and they're so different. 
they're so, so different. different and it's like where do they DNA. where do they come with the differences already from like what are you talking about like it's oh it's such a My mystical love. experience such a mystic and to see your your wife or to see give birth a human being out of another human being it's like Oh my God, it's like we are on our knees from reverence. I mean, I I live this awe uh, daily. I mean, I say to people, you know, you don't have to go watch the seven wonders of the world. You are the wonder of the world. I mean, who, who made this body so perfectly? You know, to, to when you eat and you go, my God, this food is digested and becomes my blood. This orange that I'm eating now, this this coffee that I'm having, and then it becomes me. And I mean, I wonder as I look in the mirror sometimes and say, how did you get to be here? Who are you? Right? I mean, I yeah. it we have beliefs and we have stories and we have opinions. And I speak Greek and I speak English and you speak Hindu and you speak English, but. Honestly, Amrit, ultimately, the only thing, I mean, the only thing to me that gets me there is the phrase, be still and know that I'm God, absolute stillness to be in the presence, beyond the mind, beyond the emotions, beyond what do they think of me? What am I going to do next? Uh, am I good enough? Beyond the questions of the human condition, beyond um, the insecurities, the vulnerabilities, there is a presence. And the only way is to shut up and let God love us. And there's a story of a monk that I love, that is going around the monastery saying, uh, God, how can I help? How can I serve you more? Can I feed more of the homeless and the poor? Can I plant more trees? Can I do more monasteries? And he's kind of agonizing. How can he serve God more? And he hears his inner voice say, shut up and let me love you. Wow. And really, that's all there is, you know, beyond all the words, beyond all the books, beyond all the theories, it's, it's how do we become unadorned, present, naked in everything, and open our hearts and open our arms and, and let, I mean, I feel it as we're talking right now and I ask our audience to, you know, lean back, close your eyes, let yourself be loved. Let yourself soften. Let your thoughts drift. Let your thoughts become insignificant because one thought leads to another, to another, and they don't really matter. And let them become like leaves in the river, just drifting. And come present in your heart. You can put your uh, beautiful hands, your beautiful palms of your hands in your heart, and feel your chest pushing against the heart, pushing against your beautiful palms, and take a deep, long breath. And as you exhale, exhale any worries, any fear of the unknown, any fear of the future. And just exhale with a sound like, ah. And let's just say a prayer right now. Here we are with Amrit, with this beautiful podcast, with Agapi from New York, Amrit from Melbourne. And just say, Father, Mother, God, beloved, consciousness of love, fill us, fill, fill our hearts, transform our insecurities, transform our fears, transform the parts of it that shake, that don't know, that want to know, so that the thoughts, the brain, the mind becomes illumined by the higher source of who we are. And be still inside, be still, be centered. And just listen 
and just listen what does the spirit say to you your inner spirit that is you that is just you listen is it a word is it an affirmation is it a whisper is it a song is it just a breeze And let's take a moment to just absolutely be in awe of who we are, in awe. And in the midst of the hustling and the bustling and the doings in our world, let's just be in our fullness. Just feel the light right now coming in from inside and just taking over your consciousness, opening up any small limiting beliefs and come and just say, let me be a witness of my life without judgments. Show me, guide me, protect me, surprise me, be my lover, be my lover. and romance yourself, drop the judgments, drop the judgments. There is nothing to judge about you or your life. It is perfect just the way they are. And take another deep breath and open your eyes, have a sip of water or tea or something And choose to be happy. I, I said the other day in my Instagram, I choose to be happy because it's good for my health. <laughs> that is so true. And isn't it, so, isn't it so fascinating that the simple truths are always so poignant and they're always so simple? <laughs> so simple. I love this um, uh, quote. I brought it here for, for our listeners by Imam al-Shafi. He's a Sufi Master, he says, my heart is at ease, knowing that what was meant for me will never miss me, and that what misses me was never meant for me. It's so perfect, isn't it? Because we always feel, do you ever feel, oh, I, I want this or I want that? The striving, or, oh, I, yeah, the striving, definitely. I feel striving. it, yeah. Or why isn't my book a bestseller and why am I not... Um, you know, meeting this person and why aren't these people acknowledging me and why the women, you know, go, oh, I want that man and, oh, he left me or I want her and she left me or that didn't work out. And it's like my heart is at ease knowing that that was meant for me will never miss me. And that what misses me was never meant for me. So take that affirmation and, and tattoo it in your forehead. <laughs> Put it in your bathroom and you look at it every day, you know. It's like I have all these quotes, you know. Um, it's like I, I have this quote that says, only loving messages to myself every day. I love that one. <laughs> like only. Imagine if, you, if you looked in the mirror and, you, you know, uh, there is this wonderful scientist we work with at Thrive and he says, Take um, every day, take your phone, turn it on selfie, you know, on a selfie, and look at yourself and say, you are my best friend, and I love you, and I'm here for you. What can I do for you today to make your life happier, more joyful, more uplifting? <laughs> I love that. I love that. So I, when I do workshops, I say to people, take your phone turn it on and ask yourself, my best friend, yeah. what can I do? That's what I mean, you're not alone. Mm. You're not alone like the God is like, you're not alone because the adult agape is loving all of agape's parts. It's like you got to love the part of you that is insecure and doesn't know what to do next or doesn't feel um, it got what it wanted. I mean, it's just love, love, is the only way to transform everything. And what I mean by love, 
you have to like it, but it's it's this deeper acceptance, Amri. Do you agree? It's a, uh, yeah, for me, self-love started with, a, like, I love what you're describing because it started with a self-relationship because I think many people espouse self-love, but for some people tuning into the podcast, I think it's such a nebulous concept to start. And obviously yep. at this particular juncture in the conversation, you know, you've led us into such a beautiful guided space that absolutely the, the awe is present. Um, but I think sometimes it's just a matter of starting that relationship. Like you said, turn the camera around. I'm my best friend. You're building a relationship with yourself. Now there's a space potentially right. for you to start cultivating self-love, you know? Exactly. And to and to um uh to know that you've been bestowed. I mean, like you've been bestowed those two kids and there is nothing you won't do for them. I mean, you will pick them up when they cry, you will put them to sleep, you will feed them exactly what they need to eat, you would clothe them, you'll buy them the sweetest little games and toys and why not treat ourselves like that it's right imagine if you said uh, uh, you know I mean I talk about this all the time I tell mothers every day take care of do one thing for yourself that you really want yeah you know because mothers can get so depleted and so devoted you know yeah. do you need a massage do you need a, 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 you know somebody to come and relieve you? Do you need somebody to make you a meal? Do you need uh, to eat your favorite thing? Just don't, don't eat on anything. You know, if you be selective of, of how you nurture yourself. Hey there guys, quick question. Agape as a spiritual teacher, so multifaceted. There are so many conversations we could have had in today's podcast. I want to find out from you, what are some of the questions you wish you would have asked Agapi? She's going to be back on the podcast in the future. I'd love to ask some of those questions on your behalf. And also, what are you taking away from today's conversation? For me, the deep sense of service is a really, really profound one that's resonating, but it's also inviting me into just reminding me how important that is for our vitality. What are some of the takeaways you've got from today's podcast? Comment below. Because that brings me to one of the questions I was looking forward to asking you today, Agapi, because so much of you you definitely speak to like hey like this there, there's so much narcissism in our world at times and yes but then also there's so much space for awe and self love right and yet you also talk deeply about making your life an offering yeah and oh, yes. understanding yes. like you know because it can be like and I think it can be so different day to day with the same person with the same situation. You know, like some days taking a walk that. away from the family is like escapism. Some days taking a walk away from the family is me recharging myself, you know, and it's, how do you yes, know? Exactly. Yeah. I think that you nailed it. I think it's the balance of, you know, and a lot of people ask me the question, isn't taking care of yourself narcissistic? I mean, you know, and I know people, trust me, I know people who, for them, taking care of themselves is buying a new outfit for every occasion. <laughs> I know women who, I said, do you ever wear the same dress? I mean, there is one woman I know who every time she goes to an event, she buys herself a new dress. She can afford it. But she's all about herself. She's all the, the narcissism and the glamour of the world or, you know, uh, and uh, it's sad when you see that because that to me comes out of lack, that, you know, you're not enough and therefore you try to fill yourself with the outer and, um, you know, and you have no awareness of uh, giving to other people because you're shut down and your heart is shut down. You're not going to be able to give to anyone and you keep feeding yourself. You want more and more and um, it's empty, you know. So... Uh, the offering is what my mother always used to say. And she, this is beautiful story of where she was wearing uh, a necklace and we were in England in London at a cocktail party. And, you know, the English are much more reserved than the Greeks. <laughs> and my mother said, and this woman said, oh, Mrs. Ellie, I do love your necklace. It's so beautiful. And my mother took it out and said to her, here, my dear, now it's yours. And she says, oh, no, my goodness, you can't do that. How can I? I hardly know you. And yeah. and what can I give you back? And my mother said to her, it's an offering, darling. It's not a trade. Mm. 
And so many of our relationships are transactional. I'll do this for you if you do this, you know, if I do this for you, you'll do this for me. And that to me was the offering. It's like when you offer and every day, um, I just think ultimately true happiness is being of service. And when we say taking care of yourself is being of service to yourself. So it's like you taking care of yourself is serving yourself and then serving others. And it can be in the, it can be so, so sweet uh, when you are there for someone to do something that, I mean, it can be anything. It can be, you know, in a bus where you see a pregnant woman and you get up and you say, please have my seat. Or, uh, you know, you see um, somebody who is, uh, in, in you know in the freeway and their car is broken down and and they're stuck and you go in and you say can I help you uh, or it can be friends who you feel they're struggling with their work or their deadlines I know a friend of mine who said the other day there was a deadline of of her colleague and the colleague has her mother in the hospital not well and she was so pressured. I have to do this deadline, but I have to go see my mother in the hospital. And the, and my friend said to her, I will take care of this deadline for you. Go see your mother. You know, I will stay this extra two hours and stay here and really uh, show me what what you need to, to finish. And, the, and my girlfriend stayed three extra hours to help. I mean, that's just... Uh, that's the offering of your offer of your time, of yourself, of your knowledge, of your listening. It's, um, you know, um, I the other day uh, somebody called me. She was having a real hard time with her teenage daughter. And she said to me, Agabi, do you have a minute? And I love this friend of mine because she's, she's amazing and so there for her kids. And, and I said, I, I have more than a minute. I have every all the time you want. I'm just totally here for you. And she started to cry. And she said, I'm just so struggling with my little girl. You know, she's 13 and she's acting out and I, my heart hurts. And it was like, I know that pain of, mother, you know, teenage kids who can start acting out, you know. And we talked and we prayed. And I said, you know, I have this prayer list that I put people on sending light. This is my big thing. Let me send you the light. That's what we did. You know, I want to tell the listeners when I, I tuned into Amrit for the podcast, I couldn't see him and I couldn't um, hear him. And I, my first thing is, that, oh, my God, this is not going to work. And we planned it and I scheduled it and I started to work. And then what did I do? I immediately took it. I put it in my prayer list, in my uh, I have another process called seeding. I take money and I put it in my, it's like tithing, but seeding. I said, God, you take care of this because this is important to me. And I went out to the Thrive team. There are like six people here. And I said, everybody send the light. My podcast is having technical difficulties. Everybody send the light. And I texted a friend of mine who is my golden circle light. That's what I mean. You're not alone. I could have stayed here and, and panic mm. and do nothing because yeah. what can I do with you in Melbourne? And, uh, but I sent the light consciousness. I sent the solution. And for a minute, it was like 20 minutes later, I said, oh, my God, this is not going to work and it's okay. And bang, here you were. <laughs> I'm re- there it is. Spirit in action. Yeah, yeah. Spirit in action. It's, it's right. Exactly when the things are not working. When you're about to miss your flight and you're running late, and uh, I mean, there's so many incidents every day um, in our lives, and they require just- they require some level of us the presence, like you were alluding to before, or not alluding to you, were speaking to before, I should say. Pardon me, is so important. I it reminded me just as you were sharing the deadline story there was um we were going to a a festival here in um here in melbourne and my wife and i were rushing it was the first time we were going to the festival and the festival shuts its gates at sunset and the sun was setting yeah. so it was pretty fun actually if i'm honest with you we were like racing the sun to get to the f- campsite 
And there was a lady who was probably about two kilometers from the campsite. This is like four hours from Melbourne, so we're very far away. So she's two kilometers. She's actually pretty close. Who's broken down on the side of the road. And my wife and oh. I are like not going to make it. To, like we, we were basically touch and go. We were going to make it. But if we stopped, we weren't going to make it, right? For the, the yeah. But this exactly. lady, this lady was traveling on her own. We could see the car on the side of the road, and we drove, we drove oh. past, and we realized actually no, that was the wrong decision. We turned around, we came back. I helped her change her tire. Um, we fixed the tire. We went back to the to the to the um, to the festival, and um, she got there, and they they heard our story and they let us in. Right. Oh, that's so that was so that was really exactly. yeah. So grace, they weren't allowed grace. to, but they yeah the grace right that you mentioned exactly. And so they let us in, and turns out there was um, there was a wedding that was happening at the festival. It was a pretty big deal. It was like a wedding that was happening because normally at a festival, anyway, main stage wedding happened, and she was the celebrant. And so we were really lucky oh, that we got her there, right? God. And then afterwards we met her. It was like, oh, my God, you celebrate. You were a celebrant at the wedding. It was so amazing. Thank you so much. Like That was incredible. And she's like, yeah, and here's my card. When it comes to your wedding, let me know. I'll do it for free. Oh, my God. And then we were like, what? And then fast forward like four years later, she was a celebrant at our wedding and she told this story, <laughs> you know, of oh how she met God. us and everything. That's and she was so beautiful. Touch wood, you know, and that's those moments, like you said, like, yeah, there's a deadline and the head is always sometimes doing these like catching, like trying to be here, trying to be there, like trying to be in multiple places at the same time. But if we just give ourselves the space and the presence to slow down and the offering, it was just like, hey, and I think for us in the moment, my wife, it was like, hey, this is part of the experience of us getting to the festival. Like if we just slow down for a sec, like helping a friend, like helping a friend, like we're going to experience a lifestyle festival. This is life. Yeah. I mean, that is such a beautiful story and it's, it totally, you know, demonstrates exactly what we're talking about. It's in the moment that you're called and do you respond to the call or do you ignore it? And you could have gone there and she would have, you know, the, and you suddenly realized this was the person who was so important to be. At, you know, spirit calls us in these most incredible moments and the more I feel like in the frequency, like a radio frequency, the more attuned you are, the more you hear the whisper. Mm. And whisper uh, is an interesting word to use, though, because it sounds quiet. A whisper, exactly. The spirit doesn't say, stop and help them. You go, hey, hey, they need your help. Hey, stop, stop and help. The spirit is very sweet and very kind and tender, and it softens us. The ego goes, we're late, we're late, we can't do that. We can't. The ego is pushing and it's, it's hectic and it's, um, you know, it doesn't listen. And I think um, back to your beautiful question, when, um, I mean, I think if I, if, if I was doing a next book, I would call it, um, you are never alone, you know, and, and, and like God is my partner. I mean, that's, whatever God is for you. Yeah. God is such a small little word to describe the, the presence, but it is comes back. I have this beautiful phrase that says, God is not a being, it is a state of being. It is a state of being, it's a state of consciousness that the more silent we are, the more we elevate to that energy of presence. And when we are of service, you know, you can go, uh, I never go somewhere, like I do, we do a lot of events here with my sister. Uh, I never go somewhere that I don't call on the spirit to meet me there. And I go, it's so, it's so sweet. You know, you can, um, I have, for example, I have to tell you something very vulnerable. I have a, a, a charge in my bank that's not right. And I saw it the other day and I went, oh God, that means I have to call. And my bank is one of those banks. I'm changing banks, by the way, because I love to talk to people, you know, like where I, press I need to button, know. Press this button, press that button, press this button, yeah, hold, for, it, hold for hours. Exactly. <laughs> and then you get somebody in the Philippines, you know, in Asia, uh, or you get somebody out there who doesn't even speak very good English and they want to help you and, you, and it drives me crazy. It's like I'm like triggered. And so uh, I used to have a bank manager that I always talked to, you know, which was very sweet, but the bank was sold. So 
I now have to call the bank to say this is not right and uh, this I never ordered this credit card and you charged me this fee and it's not right. And uh, I've been procrastinating to do it, not procrastinating, delaying it because I hate to do these things. And I said, okay, the way you're going to do it, Agape, is you're going to put the spirit there and be and meet with someone who understands, who is cooperative, and you can explain to them without you getting triggered. So it's it's like it's a, such a small thing, Amrit, but it's life. It's like when you go to your TSA um, in the airport. You know, I would say if you can stay calm at the TSA through putting all your bags, you know, you have to take off, you know, open your bags if they, you have something that's not right. And, and, you know, everybody at the airport is hectic and, you know, they push you. And then, and then sometimes you meet the nicest people who say, can I help you with your bag? You know, yeah. again, you know, the service is in that moment. Mm. It's not like when you just feed the homeless or you go into the big causes. Hi there, guys. I wanted to take a quick moment just to introduce you to my one-to-one coaching. It's something that I deeply love doing. As you can tell, conscious conversation is such a massive part of my life. And having one-to-one deep, meaningful conversations with people where I get to show up as your brother or as the coach or as your mentor has been such a gift for me personally and a gift for lots of the people that I have supported on the journey of living a more spiritually empowered, spiritually powered, spiritually aligned life. You don't have to take my word for it. Here's some examples of people all around the world that have experienced profound transformations through this coaching experience. Amrit is a fantastic coach. In a few sessions, he got to a depth that I'd only experienced before working with certain medicines. And He's gone through a lot of the struggles that you're probably facing. And Amrit's been a really strong, supportive figure in my journey. In control of myself. I'm kinder to myself. I actually have that vision and a purpose. I do feel like I'm a better version of myself already. Amazing energy. He was easy to talk to, which made me easy to trust him. Working with Emmerich at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and really I was bouncing out of bed. Whenever I get off the calls with Emmerich, best money we've ever spent. <laughs> I would not recommend him because I don't want everyone to know about him and then I won't be able to book him. If he gets too busy, I won't get my turn. I would say absolutely. There's no way you can work with Amrit for a period of time without being transformed. So if you're considering him as a coach, do not hesitate because you won't be disappointed. Alrighty, so hopefully that's inspiring your evolution onwards and upwards. And if you are so inspired to evolve, you can book in a one-to-one call with me directly at www.amrit.coach forward slash life. And guys, if I can say so myself, I do think this is something quite special. Most people that I see building things online don't really work with people this deeply, this intimately, one-on-one as things start to grow, just because it is so time intensive. And yet I'm so deeply passionate about the transformation that comes from one-to-one coaching that just isn't available anywhere else. It would be my absolute honor and a pleasure to support your spiritual awakening, your spiritual path, your spiritual unfoldment. It is my life's work. I look forward to seeing you in the call. Back to today's podcast. You mentioned that becoming you is your greatest accomplishment. Um, Can you elaborate on that concept? Because I think so much of society has so many programs and stories in store for us. Um, And when I say that, it makes it sound like society's bad, but they come from a loving place. You know, I can't even, as I've I've matured on this path, it's, you know, like every, like you said, what is meant for me. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody at school, at university, in college, nobody ever teaches you uh, the importance of being authentic, true to yourself, discovering who you are, your gifts, the embarking on the uh, of the journey of loving yourself, of being good to yourself, compassionate to yourself. I mean, you've got to find it on your own. And then we go after and we read hundreds of books, you know, radical self-love, radical self-compassion, doing mindfulness, doing meditation. But the, all these things uh, should be part of the academia, should be part of the curriculum at school, but they never really, nobody ever teaches us. And for me, it it was a calling. I mean, I do feel that in my heart, I came here on this planet at this lifetime to to really discover agape, uh, be true to agape, 
and then help other people open up to themselves, open up to their light, open up to their heart, open up to their wisdom and empower themselves and say, I've got it. It's not like the few select teachers that have it. I've got it. Let me find out uh, where is that spark? Where is that God within? And I'm, I'm telling you, I just really feel that um, no matter where you are in your life, there is always the inspired evolution. There is more, uh, you know, there is more of you. There is more of possibilities. And we, we discovered it through, I mean, for me, it was um, through not getting what I wanted. When I wasn't getting the parts that I wanted, when I wasn't, the world was not giving me what I wanted. I wanted the parts, I wanted certain men, and I wasn't getting the relationship I wanted, I wasn't getting the career I wanted, and I had to just do ex excavations inside and say, okay, a lot of unhappiness, a lot of uh, unknown, a lot of chiseling away and saying, oh, oh, my heart is here. I, I have love inside of me as in embedded agape means unconditional love. And if I open up to that love and I share it, I feel happy. I feel fulfilled. That's it. Is that enough? That was my calling. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my calling to know that who I was in my heart as me was enough. And, and then from that place, I started to, um, you know, do my shows or do my books or teach or do workshops or speak. And the more I did my work in the world, the more it found resonance. People were loving what I had to say. People fell in my arms crying and saying, oh my God, when I read your book, when you spoke, my heart just opened up. And I said, hallelujah, what I'm teaching, I'm, I'm really being who I am in the spirit, in my heart, is affecting other people. So that's good. Isn't that incredible? And, like when you're active. Oh, sorry, I've interrupted. Sorry. Yeah, and, and in that way, I started to fit, to be in my own fullness. You know, and and you were about to say, isn't this amazing? Yeah, because there's a there's a dance. I think oftentimes people feel there's a trade off between being and becoming, and it's such an ego, this or that game when you're in that space. Either I can be present now, but I can't do it, then I'll be missing out on what I'm potentially becoming. Like I can spend time with the kids, but I'm not working on the career, you know, or I'm doing this and I'm not doing that. But when you're aligned, the being and the becoming, you know, and who you'll be, like you said, I'm just, I'm being me and it's, it's facilitating more grace, more things. It's actually exactly. and being present with your kids. Like when I'm present with Alexander and I, and I, and I, you know, watch him um, take all his um, little Sesame street characters and put them online and say, you know, this is Elmo and this is the bird and this is a cookie monster. And he, does it over and over and we put them all together and I'm totally present with him. It feeds agape. It really because does. Because I'm honoring me and him at that moment yeah. instead of going, oh, this is not as important. I need to go do a, a very another so that when I come to do the podcast or when I write a book or when I, I'm uh, about to guide a meditation, that presence with Alexander carries on to my presence with others. Mm. It's like, so it's not, um, but the ego thinks, well, this is not important because uh, I'm, I'm, nobody knows about this or, or this is, uh, you know, I'm not being at that moment, I'm not being the adult, I'm being completely immersed in this child's experience. So we, we, we deny ourselves. Uh, so do whatever you do. My mother used to say, give your full attention. Give your full attention, you know, whether it is you're washing dishes or you, whether you are uh, exercising or um, and, and just coming into presence. But also, you know, I'm read, it's very important to unearth the negative voices in us, the critical voices. And I think we all suffer from the not good enough syndrome, mm. you know. I'm not good enough. I, I, the lack, it's like lack and scarcity versus fullness and abundance. And that's a, 
it's a constant journey. It's a constant just traveling the journey. I certainly have, tra- you know, suffered from it, you know, and I write about this in my Speaking with Spirit, which I love this book. I want everybody to order this I will this put a book. link in the descriptions below for everybody to get a copy. Thank you so much. And, it, and it, the, the uh, opening description says, and did you get what you wanted from this life? Even so, I did. And what did you want? To call myself beloved, to feel beloved on this earth, to feel myself beloved on this earth. Raymond Carver. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? It really is. It really is. So, you know, I mean, I have chapters here, my birthday wish, may my life be an offering, which, as you know, during the pandemic, I was spending my life in um, the lockdown. And so I had to really say, can I make my life an offering to life? Because life gave me life. And that's um, when I started to reflect of how can I be of greater service, not according to my agenda, but according to the agenda of, you know, how, what does it look like to serve life for agape and to make my life an offering? And that's an answer that all of us have to answer. And it changes. Mm. And it's interesting because I think from, again, from the ego scarcity mindset perspective, it feels like sometimes we're running, like you run the risk of giving away more than you can give. Um, you know, and I, I, I remember this, I, I went through an exercise, this is some years ago and I would just, the, I, I did a podcast, I learned something and I was walking along the street and I was just walking past people, not saying it out loud to them, but just offering them, like, I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you have a beautiful day and I hope you have a beautiful yeah. day and I hope you have a beautiful day. And I was just saying this as I was walking past people and I couldn't ignore the state change that was happening within me. Oh, that's so beautiful. And it was just like, oh, my God, like this makes no sense. Like if I was just – because normally you head down just, you know, walking along, doing your own thing, but all of a sudden I was focused on others. I was trying to extend something positive towards them and I was walking around and I was having a great day. And it's really interesting how we fear giving for depletion and yet it gives so much to us. So much more back, so much more back, absolutely, 100%. Because it's, 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 it's a really mathematical, scientific, uh, uh, incredible example of the more you give, the more you have. I mean, you know, when you don't give from... Um, you know, uh, from the deficit, but when, because the life in us is so rich Mm. and the more we, you know, we say uh, how uh, that, that practice of silently wishing people well Mm. and happy, uh, which is, I think a very Buddhist, uh, concept. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. Very much so. May, may, you know, may you be abundant, may you find happiness, may you find joy. And it's, um, it's just incredible. Mm. And um, we, especially if you do it for people you don't really like. <laughs> it's a, it's a real, it can be really transformative. That was actually, I was going to, there's two parts left uh, to what I really wanted to uncover with each other. One of them was going to be on forgiveness. Um, the other one was getting bigger than your fear. Um, cause both are important topics that I think you speak to. Um, but at this particular juncture, yeah, forgiveness, like, um, maybe you can speak to forgiveness yes. for us because you also mentioned earlier, just to sort of prephrase it a little bit, like ha- I-, I choose to be happy because it's healthy, <laughs> you know? And so maybe in that lens, for forgiveness. Health. Exactly. I choose to be happy because it's good for my health. Um, you know, I uh, I think forgiveness is in, uh, it's incredible key to opening our hearts because when we you know we constantly the, there is a um, a track of the of the mind of the brain of the mind that constantly judges we judge ourselves I should have done this I should have thought this I should have uh, I should have asked this I should have given this I the, we judge others and when we judge others. Uh, when you realize how people are really going through, it's, it's whatever we are going through, other people are going through. And it's like the human experience. 
uh, it's it's not easy. It's not easy being a human being. It's not easy being in this body. It's not easy being, uh, you know, the karma. You understand about karma that we all come to to work through here. You know, as a soul, we incarnate. And I just think uh, when we forgive ourselves, I mean, I have this practice uh, even at night and I go, I forgive myself for judging myself for feeling this this feeling. I forgive myself for judging myself for comparing myself. I forgive myself for judging myself for feeling lack. I forgive myself for judging myself for eating something that wasn't as good for me, you know. I forgive myself for judging myself for picking up. I pick up a lot of energies from people. I forgive myself for my suffering. I forgive myself for judging myself for judging so-and-so um, as less than me. I forgive myself for judging myself for judging them as um, being full of themselves, you know. Uh, and so, like, uh, forgiving, forgiveness, we have so many judgments that if we dissect it, you'll, you'll be amazed. You know, it's like an onion. It's like so many layers of judgments. And the more we forgive for the judgments that we do, the more we, we say, oh, God, wow, I'm, I'm free. I don't have to judge anything. I don't have to judge me. I don't have to judge them. I don't have to judge life. It's like I can just... Uh, just let the people be and let me be how I am, you know. And um, so that's a very, very important part of the of of life. And you know, I write a chapter in my book about when my father. Um, I don't know which book. I think it's. Um, I think it's my book. Do I have it here? Let me see. Um, um, when my father asked. For my mother for forgiveness because he was he really broke her heart because he was not faithful to her you know and um it was such a humbling moment there it is forgiveness that's my last chapter forgiveness the greatest gift of all and uh i write about that because it was a, a, an incredibly profound moment in my life witnessing this frail man my father asking my mother for forgiveness and my mother just cried and and it, just the healing that happened so uh, if you listening to this podcast and you holding a grudge for somebody or you are um feel somebody hurt you or betrayed you or mistreated you uh there's something very powerful about uh, forgiving them for for the judgments that you have upon them and, and yourself, because it's like um, wishing them bad. It's like you drinking the poison of what you want them. It, you're really poisoning yourself. So when we, we hold grudges, you know, Amrit, we shut off our heart. And that's doing a, a disservice to ourselves. So I think uh, that together with, I know you wanted to address being b- bigger than your fear uh you know it's it's that's the kind of easily said than done <laughs> i mean it's not like oh yeah i'm bigger than my fear well good luck mm. it's like it takes it takes a lot of um presence it takes a lot of trust it takes a lot of loving because the younger part in us the the, the lower self the physical reality we deal with fear all the time you know, the fear of dying, the fear of uh, when you have children, that something will happen to them. You know, you see them for the first day going to school. And you say, oh, my God, are they going to be OK? Uh, you know, climbing up uh, uh, the slings and the, and the swings and, and you, oh, my God, what if they fall? What if they eat the wrong thing? I mean, that that in itself, you know, is something that you can be consumed by. But the fear of so many things, you know, the fear of dying, the fear of people we love dying, the fear of, I mean, I, I have people, I mean, we all have people who suddenly are diagnosed with cancer, or they have an illness that is, it's so challenging, and you feel they're, they're flooded with fear. And so holding for other people uh, to go beyond the fear is, is a process. It takes a lot of loving, a lot of listening, a lot of acceptance, a lot of praying. I have, you know, a beautiful, as you know, 
uh, prayer uh, that I love. And there is, okay, chapter 25, page 157. Let me just read you a little bit. So, you know, again, I wrote these prayers out of my own personal um, experience of, you know, what do I do when I go through fear? Okay, dear beloved, you go into the beloved, you go to the part that doesn't, is not afraid. As I move forward in my journey, I ask to find the courage to move past my fear, knowing that the mighty spirit that lives in me is so much bigger than my fear. Show me how to transform my fear into trust and my insecurity into confidence. Show me how to transform my scared voice into my sacred voice. Let me walk this path step by step, holding your invisible hand, hearing the inner guidance in me, although I may not feel in fully or comprehend it, I'm willing to let my higher power take the lead. Show me where the opportunities are and lead me to the support I need so I can see my vision clearly and draw strength from it. As I move forward in taking the next steps, I see the sort of strength that clears my pathway so I can move with determination, trust, positive energy, which are always available to me. As I speak these words, I release the illusion that I'm walking alone and I receive the support, the guidance, the inspiration that shows me in practical small ways that I can expand beyond my fear. So be it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, thank you so much oh. for sharing that with us. I... I, I reckon that's definitely, I think we should make a snippet of that and turn it into something we can listen back to again and again. I'll definitely um, yes. get the team to do that. But thank you so much for that. And I think it's so, yeah, just the invitation of transforming where there is courage, turning that into trust, you know, where there is doubt, turning that into certainty, where there is weakness, turning it into strength, you know, the opportunity to the transformation pieces in there. Um, and the Exactly. At the every course. point, Amrit, what are we all if we use our own uh, humanness to, uh, to to love it and to offer it, and then say, I offer this insecurity into confidence, spirit will meet us there. That is phenomenal to me. You know, you have a chance to, you see, this is where I call it the dark and the light. You know, there, there are two channels, there are two trucks, there are two trains. One is going in the dark tunnel, the other one is going into the sunset or to the sunrise or the sunset, whatever you want. And there is a bridge, you know, in between, you know, and if you are in the tunnel that's going into the abyss, into the dark, into the train that's going into the dark tunnel, you can get off the train, you can cross the bridge and the bridge is called prayer. Mm. Because prayer is really the offering prayer is not just asking it's really offering and bowing down the ego the lower self the dark part and if you truly offer it from your heart and you say allow me show me as i offer that every single prayer uh, in my book is really about saying this i feel the darkness i feel the heaviness i feel the insecurity i feel the fear i i'm willing to offer it, to surrender it to the table of the altar and cross to the other side into the light. That is so poignant. I, I don't even know how to ask a question from the head, to be honest. One of the questions I did want to ask before I let you go, though, today um, is uh, where do you see the world at right now, Agape? Because... Um, so much of your work is now being so readily soaked up by the world. Like we're having a conversation here on a podcast that's talking about connecting to spirit, asking spirit for guidance, and people are soaking information like this up right now. Yes. I'm sure there were conversations like this being had, you know, years and years and years ago. But yes. the podcast, Touchwood, is 
going places, people's receptivity to such things are increasing. Is there, yes. a, what do you see happening in the world at the moment? Because you've been in this space, your mother was in this space for quite a long time exactly. as an incredible teacher herself. In this space. Can you speak yes. to the shift in the transformation of the times potentially? I think uh, there is more light on planet Earth now than ever before. There is an incredible, uh, incredible souls that are coming in to hold the light. Um, I know in my spiritual group, uh, we uh, often meet and have um, just a, a beautiful guided meditations and visualizations and calling forward the light of God into this planet. I know there are so many organizations and individuals who are, you know, calling in the light, opening up to the light, opening up to the soul. And because of that, uh, there is also more of darkness being purged. So there is as if the light is just coming in and it's purging the unconscious, the, the deeper darkness, the, um, the, 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 uh, the againstness, the separation, the war, the violence and we get to witness that and it can be very painful and, and it can cause us suffering or we can constantly elevate and send light to every single thing that comes in our awareness but our responsibility uh, is to keep awakening to keep moving into the light and to keep um, space so that we can keep affecting everything we do in our lives. So the world, the world is going to always do what the world does. Uh, the world has always had violence. The, the world has always had againstness, separation, um, division. It's, this is nothing new. It's just now because uh, it's in our face, because of social media, because of the news, the television, the the, uh, ev everything that happens, we know about pretty much, not everything, but w and then we can collapse inside and say, oh, but this is terrible. Why is this happening? We don't know. We don't understand. We do what we can, but staying elevated and staying in our light uh, is just so important. I mean, I always say when, if you're going to listen to the news, don't get sucked in. Just send light, send your prayers. It is so powerful. Gather with your communities and and see the situation dissolving. Like everything, you have the power to affect the world with your light, with your positivity, with your love, and not with your uh, againstness or, or being like a victim. Why is this happening in the world? It's not going to do anything. So, you know, it's sort of like becoming a spiritual warrior. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, and that's like picking up your, your, yourself by your bootstraps and, and saying, you know, we are, we are stronger than this. And uh, it's, we, we have a strength inside and we have a, a mighty strength that we must own. We must absolutely own it. And it's an integrity and it's an authenticity. And it's the spirit in us that I, I think that's how Moses uh, parted the Red Sea. You know, when he parted the Red Sea, he was like, he said, Red Sea part, my people have to cross. <laughs> you know, it's like that uh, when you go, my people have to cross part. And the Red Sea parted. And I think we can affect things like that when we are um, tunnel vision, when we come in into an absolute focus of being the light. And I want to uh, say this to all the listeners, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you have, no matter what you don't have, no matter what you get, no matter what comes your way, you are the light. And if you wake up every morning and every Throughout the day, you just say, I am the light. I have the light in me. And you uh, evoke it and you own it and you bring it forward. You, you birth it. It will guide you and you will know it as yourself. You will know it as yourself. And that is a happy day. Oh, goodness me. 
Agafi, people don't just have to listen to you on my podcast. They can actually connect to you via Instagram. They can email you. What's the best way for people to get in touch with Agafi? Obviously, I'm going to put a link to all your books in the show notes below, 52 different ways to speak to spirit and so many other different books as well. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, yes. Well, I have a, a website and I have a beautiful um, Mind Valley course with, for six hours. If you go to the Mind Valley platform, it's a six hour, 17 videos, how to speak with spirit. People love it. There's a tremendous uh, support and light there. I have a lot of podcasts that I've done. I uh, have my books on audio that um, all my books on Amazon or uh, on Audible, all the prayers, all the meditations. And also please uh, email me at agapi, A-G-A-P-I, at unbinding, unbindingtheheart.com, U-N-B-I-N-D-I-N-G, unbindingtheheart.com. And I will send you a couple of my guided meditations that shift you, as I said, from one train to the platform to the other train. They shift you from sad to joy, from depression to happiness, and um, from feeling ungrateful to gratitude. And uh, I, this is you uh, sending me an email, and I'll send them to you. You can download them also. Uh, wake up to the joy of you, 33 meditations to uh, guide, uplift you and inspire you for a, a, a calmer and happier life. And all those 33 meditations are on Audible. Highly recommend them. I listen to them myself. I'll put a link. And uh, my website and Agape Seas is my beautiful Instagram where you can see I have a lot of uh, uh, inspirational notes that I write and uh, videos. And um, and then I'll come I'll come to Melbourne and uh, speak. To everybody. Uh, yeah, you How will. That? That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll put a link to everything in the um, in the description in the show notes below. And yeah, we would love to have you here in Melbourne. It'd be such a gift. I love such Melbourne. Melbourne is <clears throat> it's the trip that's a bit of a yeah. A we hassle, are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> hours i think or something right yeah yeah but it's smell, what a beautiful community you have uh it's it's really special yeah i definitely don't it's not lost on me beautiful. that the uh, the podcast probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this city it uh, started with a humble gathering yeah. in my house of like-minded conscious people coming together and them urging me to start a podcast and me reluctantly going no 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 yeah, and then i'm yeah. so glad you did because you embody your message i just have to tell you you have such an incredible, generous spirit and joy. You have so much joy. And to me, that <laughs> touch wood. You don't have enough joy in this world, I'm rich. Touch wood. Thank you. And I'm so grateful that you reached out and that uh, I'm so grateful to me that I responded. You. And I'm so grateful to technology that it worked. It worked. <laughs> it was a bit of work today, it but it worked. It was a bit. You know what? You know what I believe though. This is the stories I tell myself. The frequency of what we were transmitting was so high that even the technology was struggling to keep up. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And everybody, I just uh, be blessed. Be 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 Don't happy. You. Be blessed. Take your phone and turn them to yourself and say, "You're my best friend." Uh, oh, can I read you my last poem? It's not. My, oh, Absolutely. can I read you? Absolutely, you can. This doesn't uh, even have to be your last one. Uh, you could read more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's called "Today is not just another day in your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Make it an amazing day, not because of what happens to you or what doesn't not happen, but because you are happening to you, and that's amazing." <laughs> You, you exist at this moment in time, in this forum, in this incarnation. You, so unique, no one like you. So today, bring all of you to life. Give, give of you with one agenda and one only to enjoy the fact that today is enough in itself because you exist. Give love, love some more and let your life, let your heart open up and let your life pour through and touch you first and then others. You have no right to judge you or judge life itself in any way. Today, declare this day amazing because you exist. And for that, your day will be amazing. 
no matter what happens, no matter what does not happen, you are happening to you. And the spirit of life rejoices in you. Just being you is enough. You! <laughs> <sighs> Oh, oh, Agapi, I obviously thank you so much for today's podcast. And yet today's podcast stands on the shoulders of, I guess, the giant that is your life's work, you know, and, you know, so much of your work informed by, you know, your mother instilling so many incredible values and, and nudgings along the way for you, nurturings. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, I, I want, I, I definitely thank you for today's podcast. And yet, Humbly, thank you for you. I really, really, really appreciate you, who you are in the world and, and the way you teach and guide and support all of us with all your offerings. And like I said, all, all the links in the descriptions below. But yeah, deep, deep gratitude for you, Agapi. Thank you so much for doing this with us today. Thank you so much, my dear Amrit. A big uh, uh, virtual hug and uh, back to you, back to you. Thank you for everything and, and uh, your spreading the message and bringing so many voices but again like you thanked me for me i thank you for you you know and i'm so grateful for your boys that you have them and they have you as a father Touch wood. it's a lot of responsibility <laughs> what a journey you send me pictures sometimes i will i will i'll add you on whatsapp <laughs> God bless. i hope we get to meet in Verabun. i'm putting a little wish there I said, oh, my God, the trip is so far. People always said to me, come. And I go, oh, God, it's so far. But now I've met you and your community. I think I might um, have to do ask it. God now to you have to do it. <laughs> I'm being cold. I'm being cold. <laughs> you had it here first, guys. Thank you. God bless, my dear. Talk to you, talk to you soon. Stay in touch. Will do. Yeah. I think that would be great, and then we'll do a second one like that. Yeah, you know? incredible. Oh, it means a lot to me yeah, that you loved great. it enough to want to come back. Yeah, that's... I got, oh, my, that's, 100%. One of the best uh, energy podcasts I've done, honestly. You are so real, and uh, that's part of your heritage, you know, of... Uh, I mean, I can see you almost like a Sufi dancer. Yeah! <laughs> dancing, <laughs> dancing in the in the, in the, in the love of God, you know? Oh. It's that, that, that culture speaks to me significantly. Yeah. The, and the, and the poems that you shared today. Um, yes. that, yeah. And that one where it's like, what's coming for me is always meant for me. What's not mine will never miss me. Yeah. It's just, it's so, yeah. So um, to be continued. Oh man. I feel so blessed to have connected with you today. Thank you so much again for your time. with Guppy. Inspired Soul, you've made it through to the end of another incredible episode. This conversation with Agapi was one for the soul. And there's more conversations like this. I'm going to flash a couple on screen. One with Michael Bernard Beckwith, founder of Agape. Um, really incredible conversation there also from a Mind Valley author about how to light up your spirit and live in alignment to your spirit, speak to your spirit. It's an incredible conversation. Just before I do that, I want to take a quick moment to thank you guys again to all of you that have subscribed to the channel. Everything you see here is powered and empowered by your subscription to the channel. Thank you so much for your incredible love and support. Seriously, it is such a gift. It's an absolute honor to be your brother walking this path by your side and your support through your subscription. Man, I'm just beyond touched. I'm so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And to all of you that haven't yet subscribed and have considered doing so, please take a moment. As I'm saying the word subscribe, the button below is lighting up. Please take a moment, hit that button, hit the bell notification icon, two, two episodes every week coming out like this um, to inspire your evolution onwards and upwards and inwards. Um, yeah, so, you know, continue on that journey and that path with me. Um, please do hit subscribe. And in order to go further, to continue your inspired evolution onwards and upwards and inwards, um, more podcasts on the screen right now for you to continue watching. Like I said, the one with Michael Bernard Beckwith, and a couple more that tailored just for you to explore your inspirations further. And I will see you in the next one. Go on, click your pick. I'll see you there.